Welcome to Future Talk. On today's program, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence. What exactly is it? What can it accomplish? And what are some of the most promising areas of development? My guest is one of the world's leading experts on AI. He is Peter Norvig, and he's the director of research at Google. He's also a fellow of the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence. He's co-author of the leading college textbook in AI, and he was the co-creator of a popular online course in AI that had over 160,000 students enrolled. Before joining Google, Peter worked at the NASA Ames Research Center, where he was head of the Computational Sciences Division, worked on robotics and neuroengineering, supervised a staff of 200 scientists, and won the NASA Exceptional Achievement Medal. He has a PhD in computer science from the University of California, Berkeley, and is the recipient of a Lifetime Achievement Award in Innovation from Berkeley Engineering. Peter, welcome to the program. It's great to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. Now, I've heard that Google has a very casual atmosphere. Is there any truth to that rumor? Well, you can see I'm all dressed up yeah. today. You look like uh, you just came, came the from the beach. We're just trying to get, a, get okay. the job done. Well, ask you, this is California, you know, dressing and performing go hand in hand. Yeah. So it's great to have you on the show. You're an expert in the field. I'm looking forward to learning more about artificial intelligence. Now, what exactly is artificial intelligence? What are we talking about? Are we talking about a simulation of human intelligence? Mm -hmm. Well, there's been a lot of different approaches, and, and uh, there's two factors to think about. So some people say uh, artificial intelligence is about simulating human intelligence, and others say it's just doing the best job you possibly can. And then the question is, uh, how do you evaluate uh, w w whether you're doing the best? And, and then again, there's a split. Uh, some people say, well, let's say, is the reasoning process correct? Are you saying if A, then B, and are the, all those steps logically correct? And others say, uh, that doesn't really matter. What really matters is do you get the right answer in the end? And I think the, the more modern approach is to, to take that, to say, what AI really is, is building programs that do the right thing, and do that when you don't know what the right thing is. Well, what are some of the achievements of AI? What has it accomplished so far? So, so AI is, is everywhere. It touches you every day of your life. It's uh, routing your phone calls and your internet traffic so that that's done optimally. It's uh, approving your credit card transactions to detect fraud. It's uh, filtering out the spam from your email. Uh, and so it's become a pervasive part of society today. Uh, recently, there's been, been a bunch of kind of high-profile applications of AI. Uh, for example, the driverless cars have, have been quite popular. The uh, IBM Watson program that won on Jeopardy. Uh, the uh, uh, Siri and other uh, voice recognition programs that allows you to talk to your phone or your computer. Well, the driverless car is very interesting, and I know that Google has been working on it. And I know you can't say that much about it, but just briefly, what are some of the problems that have to be solved in order for the driverless car to work? We've got to be able to uh, perceive the environment, understand what's going on, and react very quickly. And so part of that is uh, kind of a, a mapping application. And so it, it seemed to make uh, sense for Google to be involved because we've, we've already done a lot of work uh, with maps. We have uh, high detailed descriptions of where all the roads are, where all the uh, 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 pictures of the roads and so on. Uh, and we can go from that and, and understand where we are and, and navigate on a road. Uh, and so so that it has to, has to be able to read street signs, has to know the road so, laws, so traffic it's, laws. It's got to know all of that as well. And then, uh, so, so part of it is if nobody was on the streets, can you follow the roads accurately and, uh, and not get lost? Uh, so that's the easy part. Then the hard part is, well, you're not the only one on the street, that there's other cars, there's pedestrians, and so on. And so you've got to be able to recognize those as well. And so that we use a combination of different sensors to do that. So we have uh, several different cameras, and we have uh, range finding with uh, radar and laser range finders, so we can detect how far away an object is. And then we track that over time and, and form a model of what's what and, and what they're going to do. Uh, we have to be able to follow all the laws, of course. Uh, it turns out you've got to go a little bit beyond the laws as well. 
when we first program the cars, we, you know, you look in the driver's handbook and you say, what happens when you get to a four-way intersection and, and who has to yield and so on? And we faithfully put that into the cars. And then we found out if there's a lot of traffic, you never get to go. Mm -hmm. And so we had to say, well, you don't really quite follow the rules. Instead, you kind of inch out a little bit to, to signal that you want to go next. And so, it's, so it's basically experience. You basically learn. You have, there's a, so there's a lot of learning involved. Mm -hmm. uh, when we start out, uh, we don't just send the car out on its own. Uh, we send a uh, human driver on the road first and uh, have them drive and, and follow all those actions uh, with the GPS, we get a very accurate map of, of how a human would drive this road. And then we tell the car, do it like that. Okay, so a person has to drive the same road first to sort of program the car. Mm -hmm. And does the car give control over to the human? I mean, are there situations where the car says, I don't know what to do, I need this guy in the passenger seat to take control? That's right. So, so right now, you know, remember, it's all prototype, experimental. It's not a, a product yet. And so now we, we've actually got two guys in the front seat, uh, one behind the steering wheel who uh, most of the time is doing nothing, and then one sitting next to them who has a monitor that's uh, displaying sort of all the functions of the car and just sort of keeping track of what's going on. And there is a, a way for the car to cede control, say I'm confused, and there's a way for the guy in the driver's seat to press the red button and say, I'm taking over. Is there an expectation that, you know, in the lifetime of most of us today, we'll have cars that can drive without human intervention because the whole point of being in a driverless car is that you can read the newspaper or take a nap or watch TV and not have to watch the road? That's right. So uh, I think that will happen. I, I think it will happen gradually in, in stages that will, you know, and you're, we're already seeing uh, cars becoming more capable, right? So. Uh, you know, the, the first applications were cruise control and then uh, ABS braking systems, which, which are computer control, but, but a very limited form. And you're starting to see more and more of that. Now we have cruise control that's aware of the car in front of you and, and will slow down. So that's a little bit more autonomy on the part of the car. It's not steering itself, but it's uh, keeping its speed. And I think you'll see more and more. Now the big question is, uh, uh, you know, when can the driver go to sleep? And we, we aren't quite ready to, to hit that phase yet. And, and we'll have to be very mm -hmm. careful about uh, uh, how to phase that in and how to, uh, to set the expectations for the drivers of, of how alert right. they have to be, how, how ready do they have to be to take control right. back. And it's not really going to be very useful if the driver has to be ready to take control back all the time. So to be a commercially successful product, it really has to be autonomous, I think. Right, it's got to have autonomy. And, and there's, you know, there's a couple different use yeah. cases. One is uh, when you're commuting, can you be re reading or sleeping or whatever? Another use case mm -hmm. is when you're out of the car. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, instead of uh, searching for a parking spot, pull up in front of mm -hmm. a building, you hop out, and the car is, acts mm -hmm. as a valet for itself. 